Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the FTW Podcast doing the WWE No Way Out Live special coming to you live on June 16th, 2012. On today's show, we're going to be talking No Way Out. I am Joe. With me, as always, is nobody. Uh, We've got Mike from PW Torch. Hey, guys. How's it going? We've got Connor from the OK Fabe Show. What's up, everybody? And Don from Scorp 18 Talks Wrestling. Give right back a real match. And Garvin is manning the boards. Uh, if you're new to the show, check out ftwpodcast.com for more about us and how to get involved in today's show, as well as upcoming shows. You can reach out to us on Twitter, Facebook, voicemail, text message, and email. For those of you listening live, we'll be bringing in your comments and questions throughout the show, so if you want your voice heard, this is your opportunity. Today's live chat can be found at ftwlive.com. You can also email questions at ftwpodcast.com. And if you're on Twitter, use hashtag ftwlive. We'll be reading all of your messages uh, and hopefully putting them on the air throughout the show as time allows. Uh, If you're not listening live, sit back and relax, because here comes the pain. Earlier this past week, we had episode 18. Here's a little bit of follow-up. Captain Monotone said that Brian vs. Punk vs. Kane has been something of a dream match for him. He doesn't care who wins the match because he knows he'll be happy no matter what. It wasn't enough to make him want to buy the pay-per-view, though, but Ziggler getting a world title shot may change his mind. Uh, Lee Wrestling Kid says Kane needs to win it no way out. And Gary on our Facebook wall threw out a whole crap ton of predictions, uh, giving wins to Brodus Clay, Christian, Beth Phoenix, Santino, Sheamus, uh, CM Punk, and uh, Big Show. So um, we've got a lot to go through with No Way Out. Um, let me ask you guys this. Are you excited for this pay-per-view? I'm more excited for it than I was last month's pay-per-view. I mean, it's it, it's another off-brand pay-per-view, and it just seems like we're kind of in the, the lull of – uh, late spring, early summer. I mean, it looks like a good card on paper. It should be a good show. Connor, what about you? I mean, it's to me, it's a lot like no, over the limit. Nobody was really too keen on the main event, but the WWE and the world title pitchers make me interested enough that that that's pretty much the, the big matches I'm looking forward to the most. So eh, we'll see. What about you, Dan? I'm excited to see AJ again. But uh, I wish they would have a little bit more stipulation with some of the matches, though. Other than that, it should be an interesting pay-per-view. I really can't say it's going to be good. I can't say it's going to be bad. So we'll have to see and find out what happens. Um, you know, I am think I don't know about more stipulations. I just, I don't get, you know, like, if, if we're going to do a lot more stipulations, then I think that it would be, have to be like a themed pay-per-view, like, you know, like Money in the Bank or... Hell in a Cell. Elimination Chamber, yeah. Elimination Chamber, yeah. I mean, unless you did something like the Beat the Clock Challenge or something like that, but... Originally, I heard this was supposed to be an all-steel cage match pay-per-view. It was supposed to be like a a lockdown. That that was the uh, initial plan for No Way Out. So when they first announced that Scene and Big Show was going to be in a cage, I thought, all right, well, they're going to... Every other match is going to be in a cage, and to me, that kind of sounded a little terrible, but... Hmm. Yeah, they don't pay me the big bucks to book these. <laughs> yeah, I don't get paid to do this either. <laughs> Let's jump over to the first match in No Way Out that we've got listed, the pre-show match. Brodus Clay versus David Atunga. Now, on Tuesday night, we went through and everybody picked Brodus Clay. Nobody's picking Atunga. On SmackDown, however... We did see Otunga come out and blow out Brodus Clay's knee, apparently tearing part of his ACL so that he has to wear a knee brace now. He's still medically cleared, but they're not sure how well his leg is going to be, according to WWE.com. Where do you guys, where do you guys see your votes on this one? Who's going to win? Mike? Uh, I still think Brodus Clay is going to win. I, I think Otunga should. I, I wouldn't mind seeing Otunga go over here. It would give him that much-needed credibility as that, you know, th- that kind of like smarmy, you know, lawyer heel that he's been. Yeah, he, you know, he hasn't won any matches. I think this could give him some, you know, that much-needed credibility. But I think with it being a pre-show match, I think they're just going to have play squash him anyway. Okay. He'll sell, he'll sell the knee for a few minutes, but you know, he'll 
he'll rally and put Otunga away. All right, Connor? I'm pretty much in the same boat with Mike. I mean, as much as I'd love to see Otunga get that solid, credible win over someone who's had the undefeated streak since, what, beginning of the year, I think they started doing the whole Brodus Clay thing, There's no. I don't think they're going to derail the Funkasaurus character anytime soon. Although, personally, I think it would be hilarious if, if Otunga ended up beating uh, Brodus Clay using the coffee, coffee mug. <laughs> um, Dan, what about you? All right. I have a feeling this is going to be the same squash match, but not as uh, short. It's probably about maybe like two and a half minutes long. Okay. Do you think they would even throw out the whole, not to interrupt anybody, but do you think they would, they're would? they going to do the whole other dog, oh, he got hurt, and then he's coming back? And you know, Do you think they'll actually put some story behind this rather than just, bah, boom, bam, splash, boom, over, dance with kids? Um, I, I could it could pretty much be that uh, the chat is saying that Otunga will uh, have the offensive. Oh, so they say Otunga with the offensive. WWE putting on YouTube equals fan favorite win. It won't matter with the ACL. Just trying to create speculation. You know, but I think I think there's definitely strength to that. Uh, thanks to the chat. But and they're also saying if Otunga won, man, the crowd would just be, what the hell? But you know what? This is the point where if they want to start pushing Otunga, give him a solid match. Even if he loses, make it make him go toe-to-toe with, uh, with, the, with the Funkasaurus. You know yeah, what I mean? Not... Give, give him 80% of the offense and just have play rally at the end to get the win. Yeah, I mean, if you want to really want to throw Clay off, just have, have Otunga roll in the ring and then he could slip on the baby oil that's going to be left behind. <laughs> and and then Otunga can just slather all off him, all over him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, what if what if Otunga lost but got the beat down after? What, is he going to take out Naomi and Cameron? Yes. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Vince McMahon comes out for the save. And then he beats him with a disc. A, a rare YouTube appearance by Vince McMahon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I think they, they need to do something with this Brodus Clay character. I mean, he's been so stale the last few months. Uh, he needs a feud. He needs a match. He needs something. If they're just going to keep putting him in these squash matches, they should just beat him and you know, build build someone else's star up. He's he, he, To me, he's like, right now, he's like a Drew McIntyre that wins. I just don't care about him anymore, and he, I, I'd like to see him do other things. But if they're not going to do anything with him, you know, move on. Well, that's Shit my fear is that if you, if you notice that they're doing that with how many guys right now? Four. Mm-hmm. In terms of building him in that undefeated, well, I mean, it's not really like promoted as an undefeated streak, but I mean, you got Ryback, you've got Damian Sandow, you've got to a degree Sankara, now you've got Bro. I'm afraid that something's going to implode by the summer. Like, I don't know what the hell's going to happen. They'll just do a fatal four-way, you know, <laughs> one man leaves undefeated. There, that actually wouldn't be bad, but... Actually, that's pretty brilliant, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. I just wish Tensai was still in the running. Uh-huh. Yeah, I like Tensai. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> well, yes, yes. yes. Thanks, for, thanks for joining us today, Joe. Uh, unfortunately, you got to sign off now. Yeah, apparently I gotta go. Um, he likes to use his sharpies on his face. What can I say? Uh, I guess we should move on to another match because we're dying here. Uh, the Divas Champion Layla is taking on Beth Phoenix. Uh, our prediction so far: Rob has been the only person to go with Beth Phoenix. Everybody else has been saying Layla. Uh, Connor, where are you at on this one? I'm not trying to sound like a jerk, but does it really matter? I mean. Not... The whole Divas division now, it, it, to me, it just seems like we're all just waiting and biding our time for you-know-who to come back, because other than that, there's there's really... Look at the build they put to the Divas match on... to the, to the title match on SmackDown. Look at the Beth Phoenix... What was it Alicia, I think, she fought? Like, yeah. okay, Alicia... Layla was on commentary. Had, like, two seconds to, like, by the way, we're going to have a match at pay-per-view. It's going to be open. Oh, the match is over. Oh, there, there we go. All right, I'm gonna take you on. Yeah, but like literally, that was it. So, I mean, I, I, I could say Layla. 
I could say Beth, but I'd probably say Layla because there's no real reason to switch the belts off. But I think we're all just – I think generally the fans about the Divas is just like, well, let's just keep waiting for Karma to come back. Let's, is she back now? Oh, no, no, not yet. Maybe next month. I don't know. Okay. Um, Don, where are you at on this one? Um, I fell asleep. What? Oh, 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 there was a match? A Divas match? Oh. Yeah, uh, if I had to pick somebody, I'd pick uh, Beth Phoenix. But obviously, there's like nothing with this bill with the Divas division. There's like nothing. So, we'll see what happens. Wait, so, you, I'm just to make sure I got this, you, you're picking Beth Phoenix? Yes. Okay. And Mike, where are you at on this? Uh, I'm going to go with Beth Phoenix. I think they need to do something with this Divas division. And you guys know my, my stance on Karma. I, I do not think she's coming back. Um, they, they desperately need her, but I don't think she's coming back. The, this division's been dead since Layla took over. It's People are not responding to her. They're not giving her any kind of mic time. And you know, when she was with Lay Cool, I thought that was... The, the best part of her, Michelle McCool, is the, the mic work they can do, and they're just not letting her talk. Uh, I think they should just put the title back on Beth build up the baby face diva challenger and let Beth squash her every month until they figure out what to do. Okay. Um, well, we'll move on to the, probably the most anticipated match of the night. Santino Morella versus Ricardo Rodriguez in a tuxedo match. I was um, half expecting this to be turned into an evening gown match. Oh, so it's Santino just, Morella against yeah, just, just to uh, just to amuse Vince McMahon, I'm surprised it's not a, a evening gown match at the last minute. Or a bra and panties, or a hog pen. What else have they done? Pillow fight, Playboy evening gown, Thanksgiving dinner match where they wrestle in the gravy. <laughs> let's keep listing these horrible female gimmick matches. Let's keep going. One female gimmick match I want to see come back is the tables match, <laughs> the tag <laughs> match between Lay Cool and. That was a good match. I enjoyed that match. That was a good match. But for some reason, for some reason you just reminded me of Bubba Ray Dudley powerbombing Mae Young through the table, and I just smiled. <laughs> Maybe she's going to be the next Divas champion. I mean, if they're, bring, if they're bringing back Vader, maybe next week we're going to see Layla versus Mae Young. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that, I think that'd be making interest back in the Divas division. It's certainly a lot better than what they're doing lately. Yes. I bet mm-hmm. May Young can probably work better than Kelly Kelly and Alicia Fox. Yeah. You know she's definitely not afraid to do those insane spots through tables and off ramps. May Young just won the Divas Championship with a Hurricane Rana. Hard to think that <laughs> hip can take I'll just give her the Hardcore Championship. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Santino Morella versus Ricardo Rodriguez in a tuxedo match. <laughs> That's the match we're on. I'll, um, I'll, go, I'll go with Santino and move on. Okay, Mike's it, with it, Santino. It, it, it should be a fun little comedy match. I mean, with with uh, Ricardo involved, you know, I I have faith that it'll be at least entertaining. Yeah, Don, I'm picking Justin Bieber. Thank you. All right, I will write in Justin Bieber for you. <laughs> And Connor. The sad thing is, I wouldn't be surprised if Bieber showed up in his corner. Uh, I'm probably going to go with just Santino, just because, yeah. It, it, like Mike said, it's going to be a comedy, just entertaining aspect, but I'm expecting little to no athleticism here. And if, it, if there is going to be any, it's probably going to be from Santino. So. Okay. Let's see. Though we can move on to the Intercontinental Championship match Christian versus Cody Rhodes. Um, this one, I, th- for me, this one's the tough one of the night. Um, because, well, I could see both guys winning. There, There's a possibility. Um, Connor, what do you think? I mean, I'm on you with that one. That That's, that's a toughie. Um, I'd love to see Christian retain only for the sole purpose of pushing Cody further. But it just what about cause... for giving me more FTW draft points? Do you want to see Christian win for that reason? Yes. Oh, fuck you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down here in my point hole. <laughs> I'm 
surprised. I'm surprised I'm still I, getting crap. Yeah. I'm, still, I'm surprised I'm still getting crap for Devon, but hey. <laughs> if I gave you, if if I doubled up your points, Joe, not only would you still not jump up above anyone, but I think I'd still be in first place. Uh, <laughs> I think if I doubled my points, I still couldn't catch. I couldn't. I'm still not within like thirty or forty points of you. So. <laughs> You just gotta keep oh. reaching for those stars, Joe. Reaching for those stars. Keep yeah, those I'm. I'm reaching uh, right now. I'm reaching for season three because I'm gonna get first pick. <laughs> Someone's gonna <laughs> rebuilding season. Yes, yes, <laughs> totally is. I came in second last year, now I'm in last. This is just a practice run. I'm rusty. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I gotta. I, I'm probably gonna say Christian. Uh, like I said, just because. I mean, they already switched the title back with Rhodes pretty fast already. I was kind of shocked that Show won the IC title only to lose it. You know what I mean? It was just kind of, okay, and then, and then back and forth. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd love to see Rhodes back as the champion, but I'd like to see him go further than that. So maybe this might be the catalyst to say, okay, let's, let's start thinking about getting him up in the higher feud. So I'm just going to go with Christian just for that reason. Okay. What about you, Dan? This feud has been really pissing me off because uh, they've had actually no build-up for this at all. They've had, like, one confrontation, and that was it. But if I had to pick somebody, I'll definitely pick uh, Christian for the win this match. But okay. other, than, other than that, I've just been really frustrated with this because they had literally no build-up to it. Mike? Uh, I'm with Connor. I, I, I want to see Cody Rhodes move on to other things. I think Christian is doing a really good job in his, uh, his like, veteran baby face role that he's been in right now. Um, yeah, I, I, want, I want to see Cody possibly win Money in the Bank next month. Yeah, uh, that's what uh, that's what Gary was predicting for uh, on our Facebook wall. He mm-hmm. says that Cody Rhodes is going to win the Money in the Bank ladder match next month, so it's okay if he loses. I hope yeah. so. You yeah, know, he, and that that's he's, worthy. Yeah, and he's definitely one of those guys that could, he's like Chris Jericho where he can lose and, you know, maintain his heat and come back the next night and you know, you, you think that he can beat, you know, the next guy that he's taking on, and so on and so forth. I mean, look at Ziggler. The Ziggler's built a career on it. Yeah. And, sp- and speaking of Dolph Ziggler, we have Dolph Ziggler going against the world heavyweight champion Sheamus as a fill-in for Alberto Del Rio. Uh, you know, w- the group so far has been pretty split on this match. With uh, Rob and Lee from WrestlingNewsSource.com taking Sheamus, and then Garvin and myself going with Dolph Ziggler. Um, Connor, where are you at on this one? The more I think about it, originally I was just on board with Sheamus for the sole reason I'm sure a lot of people probably say Sheamus is because, oh, Ziggler's just the fill-in. But the more I think about it, SmackDown doesn't really have a lead heel right now, do they? I mean, obviously, Del Del Rio was supposed to be. I... I would say give give Dolph the belt for a month. Just see what he can do. I think he could be a, a very good heel, but it's that it's that one factor that he was a fill in. It, it's I hate to say it because I think Ziggler should get the belt. I mean, you know, instantly. But eh, it's that one factor that he was the fill in, that he was the replacement, that he was the second, you know, whatever you want to call it, the second turnaround. That, I think, is the sole reason just that I'm leaning instinctively towards Sheamus. Okay. Uh, Don, where are you at? Uh, I'm going for Sheamus. Cause I don't, no offense, but I don't think Ziggler is ready yet. And Mike? Uh, I'm going to go with Sheamus. I think they're keeping him as a long-term champion. Um, and I, I think they want to see a re- uh, they want to see a match with Sheamus and Del Rio. They'll hold that off maybe till next month. Uh, with Ziggler, I think they're going to use this as a vehicle for his face turn. I think he's going to be leaving Vicky and possibly be, maybe moving to SmackDown to be, you know, to be a face or something. But yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm either go either shoes. way, if okay. So, but I think I think either way, I think this is the catalyst for Ziggler dumping Vicky. Yeah. I think I think if he he'll probably if he dumps her. Before the match, and they're going to keep if they're going to keep the belt on Sheamus, I can definitely see Vicky or Swagger causing Ziggler to lose. Like he's going to win, and they will interfere yeah. or do something, which will get him on a face turn. 
the one yeah. of the problems I do see with a face turn though is him the the persona they've been pushing on like YouTube and all the supplemental stuff where he's just like hashtag heal hashtag heal you know he could still work as a heel you know he could almost take that Shawn Michaels DX route early on mm-hmm. you know what I mean yeah I I I think with that show off stuff I think that that's what's kind of leading to the uh, face turn you know he's losing these matches because he's showing off and you know pe- people are you know, getting behind him at these, uh, at Raws and house shows and stuff, if people are cheering him, I think people want to. They're just waiting for it, but it's because of Vicky that he's getting booed, you know, with her being out there. And I, I don't think they're going to change their plans on anything just because Del Rio got a uh, concussion. So I, that, that's why I say I, I think this match will just be a kid, uh, will just be the next chapter in the story of breaking them up as opposed to, giving him the title. Well, they gave, they chanted Ziggler's name through the Fatal 4-Way, right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, they were, yeah. I think that, and I I see where you're going with this about, about the show-off character. They could just make him, not to say this in a negative connotation, they could make him like a, I don't want to say characterless babyface, but like Kofi. Kofi doesn't really do anything too babyface-ish other than the fact that he feuds with heels and just, you know, high fives crowd. You know what I mean? He's not really there's not much too depth to his baby face yeah, excuse me speak. Baby face persona. So if you maybe morphed him to that, that might work, but I could see a little trouble going from the show off hashtag heel, hashtag heel, you know, the whole the way he presents himself, um, into that into a baby face persona, but I think it's just a matter of time. It's just finding how to get him there would be the hard part. What if he does? What if he does both? What if he tries to be heel and a face at the same time? Kind of does kind of do the like mix and match kind of thing. You mean a tweener? Think, yeah, I don't think we've done that for a while. Maybe you could do that. Well, right now you've got you got a guy like Kane who's kind of a twi- it goes month by month if he's a face or a heel. I don't know if they want to have two guys on the and and uh, along with Kane, you have Big Show, who you know, who switches every other, you know, every six months what he's going to be. I don't what know about, if they want a third guy on the roster like that. What about what TNA did with Aries? What if they did something like that? Oh, or, or just, just that yeah. damn good? Exactly. No, he he doesn't portray himself any less than he is, but he just kind of cuts back on some of the extra heel stuff. It could, it could work. I could definitely still see Ziggler. I could see Ziggler winning this, only to give something to do for the next month, so that Sheamus can get the title back at either at uh, Money in the Bank or possibly holding it off till SummerSlam. I just I I think if they're going to test the water and actually put the belt on Ziggler, this is the perfect time to do it. It's kind of like when Miz won Money in the Bank. Like no one was, yeah. everyone's like, he's going to be the first guy to lose money with Money in the Bank. First guy to lose. They no way. With, they say that with everybody, though. You know. But now know, they I, do. Yeah, but, but I, I nobody, see your point, though. Yeah, Miz was Miz was entirely underrated, and in my opinion, he was a great champion. Yeah, was, for the yeah, role he, he played, champion. and he was a great face for the company. Outside of outside of the the character gim you know, the huge gimmick you know and the character he played on WWE TV, he was phenomenal for the business, for I mean, all the some... media media events. Yeah, oh, he was willing yeah, to do everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and oh, the chat is saying they don't want to see they don't see Ziggler winning, but they and they don't want to see Swagger get involved in the match. Maybe Vicky. Um, they're also saying that you have to lose to be built up. Look at Daniel Bryan. Do you guys agree with that statement and with all the losses that Daniel Bryan's been seeing lately? I agree to the initial buildup, but, I mean, look how long, not to discourage Ziggler, look how long Ziggler's been kind of just floating for. I mean, every time he's had, like, for example, if you if you put Sheamus versus Dolph Ziggler on Raw, which they've done before, who wins nine times out of ten? It's usually Sheamus or the, whoever the big superstar that he fights. So he... he he can. He's obviously been former U.S. champion, former Intercontinental. All these big mid-card accomplishments. But when he comes to face guys that are in that little realm of the world championship, or or the top title contention, he always comes up short. But I have to admit, his matches are. You know, he makes everybody look fantastic. I'm just afraid of how 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 long does he have to lose? Is the question. Also, look back at uh, if anyone watched SmackDown last night. 
it was Ziggler who won the match against Sheamus. Like he got the pin on Sheamus, he got the uh, the heat going in, and on top of that, when he was uh, coming out for his match, he made a comment about uh, a comment about the swagger and getting away from him. I mean, I, I think he's he definitely planted a seed there for Swagger to do something on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, even if we see Ziggler win, you know, let's say Sheamus wants a shot, you could definitely see, I mean, they'd probably open the show or do it early on the card, but if if Ziggler wins the title, Ziggler versus Swagger at the next pay-per-view? Just as a filler, th- almost like a filler match to help their storyline and then... I was thinking that, but you know, I would build up Swagger a lot more than they have been. It's just kind of like one of those random things where, oh, yeah, we're associated. Because Ziggler's always been the one that's kind of been the forefront of the group, always, at, at least in my opinion. Because whose music do they always use when they come out? Ziggler's. Right. Do they, you yeah. know what I mean? Who, you know, it's Everybody gravitate towards him more than Swagger. If they were going to do that, I, I completely agree, but you'd have to build up Swagger more. So that way, because everybody's probably going to assume that Ziggler would beat Swagger – you'd have to use that to elevate Swagger into this turn. That's the only way I can see it working. I, I think that maybe if they did it, if they build up Swagger and maybe do something at SummerSlam, give it like a good little month up to build up Swagger a little bit more, I think that would definitely work tremendously. Yeah, and, I mean, you could, but in that case, I mean, we could see Sheamus take, keeping the title and just have those two build up their feud so that, so that they can end up working that and maybe into a number one contenders match. You do that, that on a, even better. You do that on a pay per view. That would be brilliant, especially if you had some type of crazy stipulation. I mean, then I could see like a cell or a ladder match or something. You know, something a little more with a little more oomph. But both those guys could also work a standard wrestling match and still do phenomenal. You could ultimately throw them in the Money in the Bank and have that be the catalyst. That could. I mean, yeah. I mean, we've already seen Swagger win one. Right, this and could... then you have them you, you – because tr- then you just do a spot where they're both climbing the ladder at the same time. There you go. It's already written for you. It's, you know, that's just natural. They fight each other. You know, They just go from there, and then ultimately beat up to SummerSlam. There you go. Um, do you guys have any more comments uh, on this match, or should we move on to the WWE Championship match? Uh, I say we move on. Move All on. right, well – yeah, let's move on. WWE Champion CM Punk is taking on Daniel Bryan and Kane in a triple threat match. Um, Mike, you threw an interesting tidbit here that fa- that Punk's been the WWE Champion for seven months and has yet to main event a pay-per-view. Yeah, what, what does that say about uh, the kind of faith that they have in Punk as a top name? When you know, right now, I, I would say Sam Punk is the number guy too, uh, the number the number two guy in the company, but behind John Cena, I think he's passed up Randy Orton and the, uh, and the flat year that he's had. Uh, but yeah. for some reason, they, they just won't give Punk that nod to end a show with with one of his title defenses. Yeah, I, I mean, the last, the last time he ended a show, he was fighting Cena. Yeah. Actually, TLC. Was it TLC? Yeah. TLC was him, El Del Rio, and Miz. No Cena, remember? Oh yeah! Did they? Was that the main event of that show? Yep, it was because everyone was clamoring about. Oh, it's a non. It's the first time Cena's never been featured on a pay per view. It was a, it was kind of a big deal, at least in my opinion. But yeah, that was the that was the last time. I'm trying to think back here. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that's the only time that the WWE Championship in recent in recent memories has been the main event of a pay per view. Was the three of them. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Oh well, I stink. That's still, yeah, that's still you know, six paper six pay per views though since he has main evented yeah. though. Oh, your I, point I, still I, your point still strong though. Yes. Yeah, but, yeah, and that was a seamless pay per view. Yeah. So, so in current predictions, we have Rob taking CM Punk, Lee taking Daniel Bryan, and Garvin and I taking Kane. Um. You know, we have the AJ X factor going on. Don, where do you think? Who do you think is going to walk out with the title? Well, with this match, when I said they uh, would like to have more stipulations, I wouldn't mind seeing this match a ladder match because I think that would make it a little bit more interesting. But uh, as for who's going to win, I have a feeling Danny Bryan is going to pin Kane and become the, the uh, champion. That way they can have a feud with CM Punk and Danny Bryan again. That way CM Punk will be like, hey, you never beat me. 
I want my title shot back, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, Connor? If they made it a ladder match, have AJ grab it. I think that'd be the most hilarious ending to the whole thing. Oh, yeah, and have her just leave with it. That would yeah, be exactly. awesome. <laughs> like, uh, no, who, I... <laughs> who is she with? She's made out with all three of us. I don't know. Um, I'm actually going to go on a limb and say Kane because um, Kane's the wild card in the sense of he got kind of thrown into this feud unwillingly in a way. The, you know how it, Kane was introduced into this whole thing <clears throat> because um, – if Kane beats any of either of them for the championship, Punk can automatically say, "Okay, well, you know, I want my rematch. I want my championship back." And Brian can say, "Well, listen, I beat the champion originally at Over the Limit. This is this is crap. The fact that you're involved, you shouldn't have been involved in this whole camaraderie in the first place. So I want my fair shot back." So, and plus, I'd like to. I think Kane as champion would be a nice little refresh. Not to say that Punk isn't a good champion. But I think it would just be a nice little twist that people don't see coming, but that's just my thoughts. Yeah, the chat is saying uh, that AJ and Brian will walk out together as if they duped everybody and Daniel Bryan wins. That would be awesome. That would be awesome, too. I love I love AJ involved in this story. I, I really do. Uh, Mike, where are you uh, seeing this thing go? Yeah, I, I think her involvement's made this a really interesting matchup. Um it makes it really hard to predict who's going to win. I mean, I can see go any way. I would not be offended if Kane won this match and walked out with AJ or if Daniel Bryan, if it turned out to be, you know, everyone them working everyone. I think that'd be a, another interesting twist. Uh, ultimately at the end of the day, I think CM Punk's going to retain. Um, but, you know, I, I really don't know what AJ is going to do though. Yeah. I mean, had they lessened her involvement on Kane, like as they as they closed on SmackDown, you saw her, like she gets injured. Kane comes down and pick. Well, it's the uh, it was the tag match in the beginning, right? So, but Kane comes out, carry starts carrying her up the ramp, and then Punk gets involved and starts beating on Kane. And there was this staring thing with AJ smiling at Kane from the stage, and she drops to her knees and gives that weird, like, demented, crazy yeah. Q look. You know, and if they lessened that, I could totally see she embraced the hate and has been with Kane for, like, in secret. It could still be a possibility, but it, it, it just throws in, like, they're trying to push it that way so people think it's going to go that way, and it's just... Almost, she's Almost like it's she, a red herring. Right. So it's like, she's like right now the perfect X Factor. The only person, I th- the, I think the person she's weakest with right now is actually Punk. Mm-hmm. Which is which is probably why she's wearing the Punk merchandise. Right. You know, were they trying to get it with that, you know, she's gonna, with him, but... But I think they did that as a build last month with AJ going back and forth. So, you know, they have that factor. So, like, every month it just grows and grows and grows. And if they didn't, if they lessened it with Kane, then Kane wouldn't have either been a factor involved in people thinking, oh, Kane's not even when he's just kind of there. It's just, oh, it's just convenient sake. But now that she's interacted with all three of them, it does. It, it I'm very intrigued with this. And whoever came up with this idea or this context of this plan or this storyline, bravo to them, definitely. And in tennis, bravo to AJ. She's done such an excellent job with her crazy chick role. I mean, she, all the other divas, especially, you know, Beth Phoenix and Kelly Kelly, should really be looking at her and, you know, seeing what she's doing that they aren't doing. Because she's, she's yeah. just such a great actor. She's doing a great acting job with us. It's Hashtag it's goat face. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, she's she's made this triple threat like really something intriguing. Not to say that the guys in the ring aren't wouldn't be doing that regardless. Uh, she's because to the next level, she's just adding that extra spice on top. This, yeah. I haven't had more interest in a match. I would say since the Money in the Bank Punk for Cena. Do you think? Do you think they could keep this going though? I don't know for how much longer it's going to uh, it's going to go, but you know, I, I I think it's very solid for what it is. It's just not something that I think is going to go like six months. Oh no, I no, think I'm not they saying can stretch it one more month and do Punk versus Kane, right? 
that money. Yeah, in I was, the bank. I was, I was thinking that too. I'm just, it's so good that you're afraid that because WWE's done this in the past, where if they take something that's good, they will beat it to death. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm afraid of is that this is a great thing they're doing. Keep it short, sweet, to the point. Maybe do another month, and I'm just afraid that they're just going to beat this thing like a dead horse. That's my fear. Um, yeah. But I, I think if they did it to Money in the Bank, it could be done the right way. Yeah. Do you think if it's going to lead to Punk versus Kane at Money in the Bank, do you think it might be an Inferno match? We Ooh, haven't seen an Inferno no. match in months, in years. They won't do that. Not with PG. I would. I love. Don't get me wrong. I love Inferno matches, but you gotta understand, obviously, that you can only do it with certain people. Unless Punk comes out in a sweater, you know who's gonna lose. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it just, eh, eh, you know, every, everyone's like, oh. You know, oh, the loser has to be caught on fire. Really? The whole body? No, just just like a part, or you know, if your hand gets fire. red. You know, not the whole. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it's like, okay, well, you know, oh, I cut my toe on fire. That means I, you know, what I mean, it's just. So yeah. AJ come, AJ comes out, traps his drawers, and catches his ass hair on fire. <laughs> <laughs> there, I uh, you should. GG. <laughs> Guys, we are getting a breaking news bit from uh, the wrestling news or from wrestling news source uh, about Punk. Um, apparently CM Punk tweeted something today, then quickly removed it. And it was lots of times you don't agree with your boss, but this plan, this is plain out stupid. These are the times I question why people watch us not looking forward to the weekend. Hmm. Uh Oh, dun, dun, dun. AJ is winning. That's it. <laughs> AJ is winning the title. <clears throat> hey, at least triple H. Lesnar's going to come in and ruin everything. Yeah, uh, we can jump right over to that little tidbit then. Uh, Triple H is going to come out and address the Brock Lesnar lawsuit situation. Where do you think that's going to go, Mike? Match at SummerSlam. Yeah. Well, the whole thing that I've heard online, and I could be wrong about this, was that they're using this as a means to build up to Raw as opposed to, you know, a pay-per-view building up to Raw as opposed to the other way around. So my guess is, if I was a betting man, they're obviously they're obviously using this continuation of the whole storyline between Lesnar and Triple H. So I'm going to p- put money on the fact that he's going to demand that Lesnar shows up on Raw for something. See- See, I think I think we're not going to see Lesnar. We're going to see Heyman. Heyman's going to come out and he's going to step over. He's going to say, "Look, you want him to drop the lawsuit? Fine. You meet him in a no holds barred match at SummerSlam." Or yeah, yeah, right. What I'm saying is, I think that yeah, I think Heyman's going to get involved at, at the pay per view. I think Heyman will be there. Um, but, but then I see was... Lesnar coming out and just totally obliterating Triple H on Raw, so that. We don't see them at Money in the Bank. We instead see them at SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. Well, they could do it. They could do a thing where, like, okay, you're gonna have a match with him, and then Lesnar attacks him. Like, well, it was gonna be at Money in the Bank, but instead, it's gonna be pushed or whatever back. Um, you know, obviously, they're just using this to just, you know, keep reminding people, okay, this is gonna happen. This is keep going. We're just we're stretching it out as long as humanly possible. Um, but do you, let me let me ask this question then. Do you think if they were – they're obviously leading towards Triple H and Lesnar. We all pretty much know that at this point. Do you think that Lesnar could not show up on Raw from now to SummerSlam and the match would still have significance or still be as 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 big? Um, and just have been? No, I, I think Lesnar definitely needs to show up, and I, I don't think they'll go that route where they'll – you know, he'll just show up at SummerSlam. It reminds me to – with – what they did with Brock Lesnar and Goldberg back at WrestleMania 20, where Goldberg was not part of the buildup at all because he used up all of his appearances. I can, I can see where they, they do something like Heyman will come out and talk to Triple H and he'll go, all right, well, you know, whatever Triple H throws out there, he goes back in and he goes, well, I'll discuss it with Brock Lesnar and I'll have an answer for you next week on Raw. And then the next week on Raw, Heyman comes out and goes, all right, well, we'll have a contract signing at Money in the Bank, Brock Lesnar will be there and they'll do a confrontation there and then start to build up on Raw to SummerSlam the night after right. Money right. in the Bank. Not not saying, I don't think Lesnar's appearances have been soaked up, but obviously they use a lot of them for extreme rules, but I was just wondering if, because obviously they brought Heyman back in so that they wouldn't have to use Lesnar as frequently, but I guess would is too much Heyman, you know, is too much Heyman and not enough Lesnar a, a good or a bad thing heading into it, so. I, I think he... I love seeing Heyman. I, I think he's 
He's my so idol. I, does, I, yeah. I, I I idolize the wa- the 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 floor <laughs> he walks on. I really do. See, but I, I, not too many people know this, but uh, last week on Twitter, Paul Heyman endorsed me as a Paul Heyman guy. You, I am, I'm <laughs> super jealous, super jealous. I try to get a birthday retweet, and you endorsed you as a Paul Heyman guy. What the hell? <laughs> what the I, hell? I, I I told him I wasn't getting promotions at my job, and I want to blame it on being a Paul Heyman guy. And he goes, "Okay, uh, we can do that. Give me your boss's phone number." That's awesome. Oh, please tell me you gave him a phone number to call. <laughs> no, I didn't. You should have given him your cell phone number and then just talked to him for a while. Oh, no, I didn't think of that. Hindsight, baby, hindsight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but anyway, we have one more match to get to. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot. There's a seal cage something, right? Yeah? Yeah, um... John Cena versus Big Show in a steel cage, and if John Cena wins, Johnny Ace is fired. Uh, they added a stipulation on SmackDown, which, since Cena punched Laurinaitis, if Cena wins, he's getting fired on Raw. Finally! So, I'm actually going to switch my vote. Uh, we Our, our pick so far had been John Cena was, was being picked to win, but only by Lee. And... Rob, myself, and Garvin had picked the big show. I've got to switch it over. I, I, I've got to go to Cena. Um, Which makes I sense. Just, yeah, I don't see Cena getting fired. The only thing I could see is if he's going to get fired on Raw, then big show wins, Johnny Ace is out there, and then Vince McMahon fires him on Raw before he can fire Cena. Or he fires Cena and McMahon threatens him that he'll be fired if he fires Cena. You mean like kind of like what they did last time? Yep. Or the time before that. <laughs> or the time before that. Cena's been fired. Cena gets fired pretty much every eight months. Yeah, but he'll go make an impact somewhere else, my ass. <laughs> I don't think he'll... they could buy him Fruity Pebbles. Brother. He'll be the, he'll be the Rinka King somewhere else. <laughs> Imagine just watching a ring, a ruck, a uh, ring kicking promo, and then all of a sudden you just see John Cena there, and like, did I just see what I just thought I saw? What, what was it like a cut feed or something? What the hell was that? I just saw some like green fruity pebble in front of my screen, and I'm like, what? Oh, fun, fun, fun. So, okay, guys, predictions. Who's who? Who's taking who? I'm pretty much in the same boat with you, Joe. I'm Cena just because of that same whole same reason of, you know, hey, we're going to fire Cena or fire you. Hmm. Do we fire the top guy of the company who's drawing the most money right now, or do we fire a character we really don't need on TV? That's a tough one. That's really hard to pick. I mean, I, obviously it's going to be it's gonna be Cena. Okay. Don, Plus, what Cena about has- you? Oh. Uh, I have an idea, and you guys are probably going to hate this idea. What happens if Big Show and Cena hit the floor first, about the same time? Mm, not, uh... Then neither one of them gets fired. Or... See, I don't... I, I can't see... With, with both of these characters, I just don't see somebody not being pinned. I don't see a, a cage escape being the end of the match. What if they... That's actually not a bad idea, Don. What if they did... Remember how JBL beat Big Show in a cage? A couple years ago, like seven years ago, Big Show choke slammed JBL through the ring, and then he crawled out underneath. Huh. That yeah. might not be bad. They, was... I, mean, I thought that was one of the cl- most clever finishes I've ever seen in my life. That wouldn't be too much of a far stretch. Yeah, but I don't think creative is that uh, creative. <laughs> you know, JBL actually recently talked about that match... Um, on his blog, and I don't know why the hell I saw it because I do not follow his ass. But <laughs> he seemed like he'd be a cool guy to hang out with on occasion. But like, all, all, all he does yeah. on Twitter is talk about drinking PBR and making fun of Charlie Haas. <laughs> I, I've, I've just summed that up sounds, twenty-four months of tweets. That 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 sounds like a good Wednesday night. <laughs> that just saved me a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, but no, he actually was discussing the match and how much respect he had for Big Show. Uh, it was right about, I think it was right about the time that they fired Big Show, so, 
Uh, if you feel like it, find his blog and go check that out. Cause it was it really was a good read. Um, Mike, Don, where are you guys at on? All right. Oh, I'm go ahead. With... Oh, go ahead, Don. Go All right. Um, I'm going. If I had to pick somebody, I'd pick John Cena because I don't think they're going to get rid of uh, John Cena. It could be a Big Show because John Cena's got that you know unfortunately divorce thing going on, but. But yeah, I'll, I'll pick John Cena win. Okay, um, Mike. Uh, I think that the only guy John Cena is able to beat these days is Brock Lesnar, so I'm going to go with the Big Show. All right. I I, I think it, it'll bring more uh, interesting angles to have Big Show win, and especially if they're giving him a renewed heel push. It would make sense for him to you know really win his first match against Cena. Maybe, yeah, I would you know do do something. Have seen and go wait. You know, take a break for a few weeks or yeah. I mean, even if you go back and remember Extreme Rules, we're seen to talk about going away for a while, and they kind yeah. of ignored that. Um, maybe this could just I've... give give him a break through SummerSlam or something. Give him the summer off to get his head straight with his divorce and anything else going on in his life. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. I mean, I could even see Big Show if they're going to try and replicate the JBL through the through the mat thing, um, but change it up so Big Show puts Cena through the through the mat and then just walks out, or through the door, or through the cage. Yeah, right. yeah, they haven't done that in a year, and usually that's reserved <laughs> that's for Big right. Show matches. <laughs> or Cena can. Give show a drop kick and the side of the cage could open up and he and show can fall out and win the match. Not to steal from TNA. So, is there anything else you guys want to say about this pay per view? No, I think I've said what I had to say. Um, it's, yeah, it's, like yeah. I said, I think it'll be a good show. It, it looks okay on paper and um, it just seems kind of like a filler between now and SummerSlam or you know Money in the Bank when the SummerSlam hype really starts up. Um, yeah, it should be a good show. I'm really looking forward to Punk, Brian, and Kane, and that, the Sheamus Dolph match. I think should be good. Um, yeah, it's, it should be interesting. Connor, mm, I'm very hopeful for I'm very hopeful for the future uh, for what happens more after it. Um, but yeah, there are a couple intriguing things like Sheamus and Ziggler and the Triple Threat WWE Title match that makes things interesting. And Don's suggestion of maybe a double escape just made me think even more so that 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 might be a possibility but i mean i'm hoping that maybe the undercard matches that we're kind of dismissing kind of quick hopefully maybe one or two of them maybe does decently like maybe the <clears throat> maybe um maybe the divas match is better than we're hoping for but you know overall i think the paper is going to be okay but i'm hopeful it'll be better than just okay i just want to see vader back Oh God! I thought he looked good for was he fifty seven years old, and he he looked exactly the same from last time I saw him. His in ring ability was limited, but given the fact of his age and his and his girth, I thought he did pretty damn good. Yeah, hell, he did better than Kali in the ring. God. <laughs> well, I can do better than Kali yeah, in the that, ring. That's not saying much. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Let's just all remember that there was a match at a pay per view between Kali and Hornswoggle. I'm just gonna say that out loud. And I missed that one. I think Hornswoggle yeah, no, is big as his foot. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, apparently, more breaking news, Punk saying that the tweet wasn't from him, and he doesn't delete tweets, so maybe that's retracted and the Dirt Sheets posted a false report, and maybe it's a fal- they pulled it from some fake Twitter account? Nah. It's possible well, it did come from him, but who knows? You know, it's not saying they're not saying which account it actually came from, they're just saying it was from CM Punk. But the dirt sheets are always so honest and forthright and, and, and based on factual information. How could they possibly get this wrong? And let's all remember the fact that Mike says he used to submit false uh, yeah. false information to the dirt sheets. Yeah. <laughs> so, summer of 99. <laughs> Mike, Mike Tyson was supposed to be the higher power. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, uh, that would be hilarious. Who was it? It was me all along. <laughs> was that Kyle's mom from South Park? I know. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right, guys. Uh, Should have been the Iron Sheik, I'm just saying. Oh, that would have been wonderful. Great.
All right, guys. Um, that's the show. As you can tell, we're just a group of friends that do this in our spare time, and we won't charge for things like this, like some shows do. Hey. But we do work really hard at making sure uh, we put out some quality entertainment for you guys, even if it's a show like this. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're not asking you to send us your money. If you want to, though, you can buy a T-shirt at ftwpodcast.com. Click the merch link at the top. There you go. You can take a look at the shirts available. If you got an idea for a shirt, let us know. We'll whip Harrison and make him uh, make him create it. Uh, if you'd like to really show us some support, though, you can rate us on iTunes, help us improve our rank in there. Uh, the higher we get, the better chance we'll get for more listeners. You can also tell your friends and spread the word about us. We're incredibly easy to find. Remember, ftwpodcast.com. You can also find us at ftwlive.com for our live shows. Facebook.com slash ftwpodcast. Twitter.com slash ftwpodcast. YouTube.com slash the ftwpodcast. Uh, you can catch Connor where... YouTube.com slash OKFabe is back. Alrighty. You can catch Don at his at his YouTube channel, which is Scorp18 Talks Wrestling. Alright, and you can always find Mike where? Uh Dateline Friday to catch a predator. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh <laughs> uh never did. I I uh cover SmackDown for people. George.com. Look for my reviews every weekend. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at MJQPAC. Uh, I'll be tweeting this Sunday with live pay per view and every Monday from Awesome. Uh, once again, you can find the FTW Podcast at Facebook.com slash FTW Podcast, Twitter.com slash FTW Podcast, YouTube.com slash The FTW Podcast. You can let your voice be heard by leaving us a voicemail at 313-444-FTW4. That's 313-444-3894. You can also email your questions at questions at FTWpodcast.com. Thank you to everybody in the live chat. We record the FTW Podcast standard episodes on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern at FTWlive.com. That's all I've got. Uh, see you guys later. Thanks for having me. Same yeah, here. Tuesday.